Hey, what's going on guys? If you have gasoline leaking from your air filter, don't worry, I've got a quick solution for you. Um, we're gonna first just quickly talk about why it's happening and then we'll go over how to fix it. Stay tuned. All right, now on this particular generator, if you're familiar with uh, generators, you're probably gonna know that this air filter is never gonna be soaked with gasoline because it's located above the carburetor. But let's just pretend for all intents and purposes that this air filter is in line with the carburetor so that we can have the same issue. All right, now if your generator is leaking gasoline from the air filter, the problem more than likely is going to reside in your carburetor and it's gonna be a compromised bond between the float needle and the seat, which shuts off the flow of gasoline to the carburetor bowl. Now, if you're new to carburetors, this is what they look like. They're kind of like a little spaceship, a little Sputnik thing. Now at the bottom, um, once this bolt is removed, let's take a look at what's inside. So we drop the bowl down here. Now the point of the carburetor is it will supply gasoline in here. It'll fill up the bowl with gasoline as the generator needs it. And once the generator has all the gas that it needs, it, the gasoline will push up on this hollow float. The float will rise. And then if you notice right here, as the float rises up, there's a needle that gets pushed up and it should mate perfectly with the seat in there and cut off the flow of the gasoline. If that surface is compromised in any way though, gasoline will continue to flow into the carburetor bowl. Since a gas tank is typically located above your carburetor, liquid will seek its own level. So the gasoline will continue to rise up through the main jet here at the bottom and then up through into the throat of the carburetor. As you can see there, a brass fitting sticking up. From there, depending on which way gravity is going, um, which way your generator is tilted, it can either run into the combustion chamber um, and leak down past the piston rings into your uh, oil in your crankcase, or it will flow outwards towards your air filter. So how do we fix this problem? It's not that hard of a thing to do. Basically shut off the fuel valve that runs from your gas tank down to your carburetor. From there, you're going to remove this, uh, while the carburetor is still attached to your engine, you're going to remove this screw here on the side that's typically on a 30 or 45 degree angle. Remove that with a 10 millimeter or 11, 12 millimeter um, wrench or socket, depending on which brand carburetor you have. Take that off, have a jar underneath to catch the gasoline. You can put that gasoline back in your gas uh, tank if you want, if it's good fuel. And then um, put that screw back in once the gasoline has drained out. From there, you're gonna remove your air filter and then take, a, take off the air filter assembly. It's typically held on anywhere from two to four screws. Take those off and then there will be two uh, bolts that hold on your carburetor typically. You'll remove those as well. But before you do that, take a picture of all of the linkages that go onto your carburetor, um, just so you know exactly where everything goes. Because as you pull your carburetor gently off, you're gonna have to dis uh, detach those linkages and you wanna know exactly where those go so that your engine runs right once you put everything back. Now with the carburetor removed, you're gonna simply, it'll look like this in your hand, simply take a 10 to 12 millimeter wrench or socket, depending on which brand you have, of course, and you'll remove the bolt from the bottom. A little bit of gasoline will still be in the bottom of the bowl, so just be aware of that. Take the bowl off, and then take a picture of the pin assembly here that holds your float on. Uh, some of them will have an extra spring that takes up some of the slack. Um, mine is very simple, it's just simply a pin, and you'll scoot that pin out to one side, and then lift straight up, and then the float needle comes with the float, and set that aside as well. From there, you can see the seat. Now, um, float needles will come in two different types. You'll either have one that is rubber-tipped, or you'll have one that is metal-tipped. The rubber-tipped ones will fit into a metal seat, and the metal-tipped needles will fit into a rubber O-ring type seat. Now, there could be a compromise bond for any number of reasons. Typically, there's only three or four, but it's usually a deformity of the rubber. So the tip of the needle could be deformed slightly. Um, if it doesn't look like a perfect cone, go ahead and replace it. If uh, it's damaged, scratched in any way, replace it as well. Same thing uh, goes with the rubber O-ring type seat that you might have. To remove that, the best tool that I found is just to take a bobby pin. It has um, like a little bulb at the end. It's not gonna hurt anything. And you can basically put it right through that O-ring and then gently pry it out, drag it out. Go ahead and check that O-ring for any um, tears, scratches, or splits. Um, I've had 
two or three in my in the last two years that I've worked on with different types of engines, snow blowers and generators where the O-ring was split. So go ahead and replace that O-ring. It's a very cheap fix. Now, if everything looks good, if your needle looks good, the seat looks good and all of that, um, you'll wanna still clean it out. Now, if you have stale gas or you've had stale gas in the past in your generator, that gas might have turned to varnish and that varnish could be kind of creating a disconnect somewhere in that bond. Uh, so go ahead and use some carb spray. Now remove the rubber O-ring first with a bobby pin if you have a rubber seat uh, because carb spray does not mix with rubber too well. So spray it around in there with, and then you can clean it out with a Q-tip. That'll take care of that. Um, and then you can also just look for any debris you might have in there as well. There could just be a little piece of something that slipped past the fuel filter and um, that might be your problem as well. So once you address that, that 99% of the time will take care of your problem. Go ahead and put everything back together, reassemble everything as it should, and then you should have a generator that no longer leaks gas into your air filter. Now, if you found this information helpful, I would appreciate you hitting the like button just so others can find this video. I appreciate your view and your support. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care.